वेलकम इन दिस अनदर लेक्चर ऑन द स्कैटरिंग थ्योरी एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर वी विल डिस्कस फर्दर बिकॉज इन द लास्ट लेक्चर आई जस्ट हैव इंट्रोड्यूस यू व्हाट दिस स्कैटरिंग थ्योरी इज व्हाट आर द इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स एंड आई आई जस्ट हैव एक्सप्लेन यू दैट इन इन द कमिंग लेक्चर्स वी विल डिस्कस इनिशियली द इंपॉर्टेंट टर्म्स व्हाट वी विल यूज इन दिस पर्टिकुलर थ्योरी एंड लेटर वी विल डेवलप दोज एनालिसिस Uh, we will use the lipkin's finger equation born approximation and uh, the partial wave analysis but before doing all that we first have to be very uh, very sure about the terms that uh, we are going to use in this particular lecture series so this is the just the first lecture to make uh, you familiar about the terms that we will use and uh, before doing that let me explain you what uh, the uh, scattering experiments looks like so it is just very simple thing it is happen in any kind of scattering so generally you have some target right some target uh, material or the par uh, particle so target can be material some extended object or it can be some single particle you can just place the neutron or or, or just nucleus very small uh, particle and you are throwing some of the particles right these are called incident particles or projectiles so in this scattering experiment you have target you have incident particles or projectiles and these incident particles will project or incident on this particular target some of the particle will interact with the target and they will get scattered in some direction right and some of them will pass through uh, undeflected right so they are not deflected or because they have not been interacted with the target so those particle which have interacted with the target will be scattered in some particular direction those do not interact with the target will pass through undeflected so that is what will happen in this scattering experiment and what we will do we, we will just have some kind of uh, detector uh, which will detect the number of particles coming in that particular direction uh, before doing that let me uh, tell you that in the scattering experiments we will use this spherical uh, coordinate system and right, because the things which are happening here in, uh, are happening in the 3d and it is much more easier to use a uh, spherical uh, coordinate system uh, in, in comparison to other coordinate system so you must be familiar about uh, about the concepts and basic structure of the spherical coordinate system uh, i'll explain you what this spherical uh, spherical coordinate system is i have drawn uh, some basic uh, picture there to explain you the concept but uh, whatever we will do the calculation we will do in this particular theory we will use spherical coordinate system the first thing is that so it is just very simple setup some incident particle will scatter by the uh, target they will scatter or deflected in some particular direction so first of all let me explain you how do we define the direction in spherical coordinates so in spherical coordinates we define direction by using these two angles the angle phi So the angle theta and angle phi. Angle theta is the angle of that particular direction from the z-axis, right? And what you do, you just have to throw some light from uh, the z-axis, right? Uh, from the z uh, direction on this particular position vector, and you just have to observe the projection of this particular position vector on the x-y plane. And phi is the angle of that projection. from the x axis so I, i know that you have studied the you must have studied the spherical coordinate system and you know all that but just now to refresh your memory that theta is the angle of the position of the particular position that we are looking at from the z axis and phi is the angle of the projection of that particular position vector from the x axis so these two angles we will use to define the uh, particular direction in the spherical coordinate system so that is a uh, very important concept that uh, you have to be aware of so before before just going uh, further in in this particular scattering theory just let let me just explain you some of the basics of spherical coordinate system so here i have drawn this spherical coordinate system right so these are the x axis y axis and z axis so it is just the coordinate system the cartesian coordinate system we we use but in spherical coordinate system let us suppose that you just want to or define the position of that particular point so what you will do you will measure the direction so to measure the distance of that particular point from the origin and you will name it as r 
and we will use this particular uh, direction as r direction the direction of r right and what we will do we will uh, measure the angle of that particular position vector from the z axis and we will name it as theta and we will project this particular position vector on the x y plane and we will measure the angle of that particular projection from the x axis and we will call it as phi so these are the three quantities that we will use to define the position of any particular point in the uh, spherical coordinate system so we will say that the position of that particular point is in the spherical coordinate system is r which is the distance of that point from the origin theta which is the angle of that particular direction from the z axis and phi which is the direction of projection of that particular position from the x axis so there are uh, three important quantities right so you can do this basic trigonometry and algebra i'm not going that deep but the important thing is that any line element dl is the line element any line element in the spherical coordinate system can be written in the direction of r r d theta in the direction of theta and r sin theta d phi in the direction of phi and you can just add them these add these uh, three vectors which will give you the line element in this spherical coordinate system you must have studied the vector analysis right in your bsc and there you have studied about the uh, spherical coordinate system it is just to refresh your memory i'm not going into detail uh, how these formulas can be written or derived the volume element right the volume of some infinitesimal element in this spherical coordinate system can be written as this you just have to multiply this this term and this term right so by multiplying these three terms you will get the infinitesimal volume element in this spherical coordinate system so let us suppose this is the infinitesimal cube so its volume will be r square sin theta dr d theta and d phi we will use these kind of formulas when we will integrate some of the uh, quantities in the next lecture so it is just to remind you one more concept let me introduce you before going deep into the scattering theory which is the concept of solid angles that right? you you must have studied that uh, concept in your bsc but let me just reintroduce this uh, particular concept so solid angle is defined as the area right area which substitute that angle at, at the origin divided by the square of the distance of that particular area from the origin so let me call it as o the origin and this is the area which is substituting this particular angle at origin so this area is da right da in the direction of r so it's because you know area is the vector quantity and the direction of the area is is the direction perpendicular to that particular area so we are assuming uh, the direction of this particular area as in the direction of r so we are writing it as da r gap divided by r square the distance of that particular area from the origin the square of that particular distance now in this spherical coordinate system the area in the direction of r if you just want to calculate the infinitesimal area very small area in the direction of r so what you have to do you just have to take cross product of this term with this term so it is r square sin theta so r square sin theta d theta d phi right uh, and when you will cross product these two vectors the uh, theta gap and phi gap you will get r gap that r gap will be in the dot product of this r gap and which will be one just the unit vector then these r uh, square will cancel to this r square and the infinitesimal solid angle in this spherical coordinate system is sin theta d theta and d phi so this is the very important quantity which you have to remember in this particular lecture series that the volume element in the spherical coordinate system is this the line element is this and if you want to calculate the area element the infinitesimal area in in any particular direction in the spherical coordinate system so if you want to calculate the area in the direction of r then you just have to take cross product of these two terms if you want to calculate the infinitesimal area in the direction of theta then you have to take the cross product of these two terms if you cal want to calculate the infinitesimal area in the direction of phi just have to take the cross product of these first two terms 
so that is the way to calculate the infinitesimal area element and this is the way to calculate the infinitesimal angle the solid angle in the spherical coordinate system so this is very important relation that you have to remember so now let me define the differential cross section for you right so let me just read out the definition and then uh, i'll explain you the meaning of different words used in this particular de uh, definition so differential cross section is defined as the number of particles the first thing to note is that it is defined as the number of particles right so uh, you don't have to confuse it because it is the cross section so uh, there is confusion in that so it is just the number of particles scattered into an element of solid angle d phi in the direction of theta and phi so what you have to do is that you first have to look for the scattered particle not the incident particle then you what you have to do is that you just have to take some solid angle d omega in the direction theta and phi so we we just have drawn this particular figure uh, for this particular definition is uh, for this particular definition so there is this direction theta and phi and there you have some very small infinitesimal angle d omega and what you are doing is that you are counting the scattered particle in this particular uh, solid angle in the direction of theta and phi per unit time so you are counting it per second uh, for example and per unit incident flux so what is that let me just explain you the meaning of incident flux first so let us suppose that there are n number of particles which are uh, coming to hit the target right so there are some n number of particles and uh, the area of this uh, the cross section area of the beam right, we are supposing that to be a so this number of particles per unit area in this particular beam is the density of those, those particles and those particles if we divide it uh, with time so this is the quantity called incident flux so it is the number of particles coming inward per second per unit area of the beam right so let me just give you example let us suppose that there are 100 particles which are coming per second so these are 100 particles per uh, second and the area we are supposing uh, that it is just 10 centimeter square so what it is the incident flux is 10 centim 10 10 uh, uh, particles per second per centimeter square so this is what the incident flux is so what is happening that uh, is that the uh, the per per centimeter square of the beam has 10 uh, number of particles passing through that area per second and out of those 10 let us suppose uh, the 3 uh, is is detected or are detected in this particular direction in this particular sol uh, solid angle so that three is called the differential cross section right so that is the number which we get out of the incident flux per second in the direction uh, theta and phi in in this particular solid angle d omega so just let me read out again it is defined as the number of particles scattered into an element of solid angle d phi in the direction theta and phi per unit time so if n particles are coming per unit time per unit area and some uh, capital n particles are going in this particular area so that particular n capital n is defined as the differential cross section so which is very important quantity so let me just write it in the mathematical form right so uh, how it is defined mathematically it is defined as d uh, sigma divided by uh, d omega where d omega is the solid angle and j incident is the incident flux it is the incident flux at the number of particles per unit area per unit time which are coming in this particular incident direction so the differential cross section is defined as the number of particles detected in this particular solid angle uh, d omega so it, it may be that uh, the, uh, the total number of particles in the theta and phi direction is n but because we are taking very small uh, solid angle so we are taking very small number of particles coming this particular solid angle so which is dn of theta and phi right per unit solid angle so it is the uh, omega down there per unit incident flux so this is the number of particles detected per second and this is the incident flux right so incident flux is the number of particles coming per unit area per unit time so if, if you just uh, calculate the unit of this particular quantity which is uh, this this is the number of particles per second so it is just one over second 
and this is the number of particles per unit area and per second. So per second will cancel to that per second, and this per area will uh, be in the numerator, and the unit of this particular quantity will be uh, the area, uh, the, the unit of area, and that's why this quantity is named as the cross section, differential cross section. But it is not uh, the cross section as in the usual sense. It is just the number of particles scattered in the solid angle element d phi in the direction d theta and phi. Now this is just the differential cross section, which is a very important quantity, and this is the quantity which we measure in the experiments. Right? We count the number of particles coming per second uh, in, in some particular direction. Now this is just the differential, and which is very obvious to calculate the total cross section, which is just the integration of this particular quantity with respect to the omega for all the solid angles. And as I explained to you in the spherical coordinate system, the solid angle can be written as sine theta d uh, theta d phi, and that's why you just can put that value uh, in this place, and the total uh, cross section. Uh, will be the integration of this particular quantity, the, the differential cross section into this sin theta d theta and d phi. So these are the two quantities which are the most important quantity in uh, the scattering theory, and these are the quantities which we will calculate in the experiments, right? And that's why these are these are important quantity. So uh, thank you so much for this particular lecture.